Before we talk about the Fourier representation of signals and linear time invariant systems, we need to review some topics such as geometric series and Euler's formulas. First we'll talk about the geometric series and find a closed form solution. And this is used a lot in digital signal processing. One useful tool when studying digital signal processing is the geometric series. And a useful formula you need to know as follows where we have a 1 divided by 1 minus x and we can do this by long division so here we have 1 divided by 1 over x and I'll just do a couple of terms here so that's just 1 minus x and that leaves x here plus x and we have x minus x squared that leaves x squared right here multiply by x squared x squared here minus x cube and x cube here and we can say here that's x cube and that goes on infinitum and we can represent this x set of expression or these series series as the following as uh, k equal 0 to infinity x raised to the kth power as long as x is less than 1 the magnitude or absolute value of x is less than 1 now we're going to use this expression or formula this closed form solution for this geometric series to generate one where we have the upper limit to be finite as well as the lower limit. In the previous discussion we found that the summation of this geometric series k going from equal to zero to infinity where we're trying to sum this geometric series where alpha the magnitude of alpha is less than one and we saw that one divided by one minus alpha is equal to 1 plus alpha plus alpha squared so on. Now what happens when we have a finite sum in which we'll deal a lot with digital signal processing where we have a bunch of shifters, multipliers, and adders and we want to add up this geometric series and we want to find a closed form solution. Well we're going to use this formula here to generate this sum. So we're going to take this equation, this top equation, and multiply by the following factors. So let's multiply first with alpha raised to the nth one power. So we take this expression right here, this equation, and multiply alpha and one to both sides. When we do that, we see here on the right side that the first term where there was a one is now alpha to the n1 and we multiply each term here with alpha raised to the n1 power and when we do that we get this following equation alpha n1 divided by 1 minus alpha where we multiply alpha raised to the n1 power in this expression 1 divided by 1 minus alpha that yields this now we have this equation for this geometric series. Now we're going to do a similar thing for the upper limit and we note that n2 is greater than n1 for this summation going from k equal n1 to n2. Now we multiply this expression, the same expression that we did earlier, and we multiply it by alpha raised to the n2 plus 1 power. When we do that, the first term in this equation, where highlighted right here, is now alpha raised to the n2 plus 1, and then we multiply each term here by alpha raised to the n2 plus 1 power. And this yields a similar expression that we did earlier but this time it's alpha raised to the n2 plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha. 
Now we see here the common terms in this equation and we compare it with this equation has similar terms. So when we subtract this expression here minus this expression we see some cancellations. And what we're left with is when we have is that we have this finite set of terms here, we have this expression and this expression, and when we subtract this from this, we see the common denominator is 1 minus alpha, and now we have alpha 1 divided by or subtracted by alpha raised to the n to the 2 plus 1 power. Now when we do this, we have now the summation from k equal n1 to n2 shown here to be this closed form expression. And this is for, uh, a useful formula found in digital signal processing when we do, for example, the Fourier transform of discrete time signals. As an example to the closed form solution of the geometric series discussed earlier, earlier, let's look at a unit step function u of n where everything below n equals zero is zero and anything greater than n equals zero is one. So by definition the transform of a periodic discrete time sequence is given as follows x e to the j cap omega is equal to this summation going from minus infinity to infinity x sub n multiplied by this complex exponential e to the minus j cap omega n. Now since this is a unit step function our summation changes from n equals zero to infinity our x sub n is just simply one and it's e to the minus j cap omega n. We note our closed form solution for this infinite sequence can be given as 1 over divided by 1 minus alpha, where alpha, the magnitude of alpha, is less than 1. We also note that alpha is equal to e to the minus j omega if we're going to apply this closed form solution to this geometric sum. So here we have e to the j cap omega, again this is what we call our discrete time Fourier transform for this discrete time sequence. And this summation of these weighted complex exponential series is just simply 1 divided by 1 minus alpha, where alpha is e to the minus j cap omega. So this is our Fourier transform for this discrete time sequence.